Welcome to the review of The Ancient Art of War. The game was created by Everywhere and distributed by Broderbund in 1984. If any of you are familiar with old DOS programs, you'll notice that the graphics here and how the menus are laid out is very similar to a lot of the print programs that existed in this time. This particular version I'm demoing is actually using VGA graphics. The original version that I had didn't have 16 colors, it only had 4. In this screen, in the old shop, you can change the settings. You can disable the sound, you can use a joystick, etc. Once all the settings are in place, it's time to go to war. There are various titles or scenarios in order to play in this game. Essentially, these titles determine who you're going to fight, the type of terrain you're going to be on, and how difficult the war will be. The different types of scenarios really make it feel like you're in the game. Once you choose your scenario, you're presented with a rules page. The Ancient Art of War is a real-time strategy game. In fact, it's probably one of the first ever created. The rules allow you to control things, such as how food is supplied to your army. There's also several options for the terrain, how dangerous and safe it is, and how you get to see the enemies on the map. Since this is an old game, there wasn't such thing as a mouse at the time. This means you'll be using the keyboard in order to play the game. Finally, you have to choose who the leader is that you're going to be fighting. Some of them are easy, some of them are very difficult, and of course they have specialties as well. The top of the screen has a little text description about the leader and their army type. It mixes mythology along with some real world people. And the developers had fun throwing in a guy named Crazy Ivan. Once you choose who you're fighting, you're presented with this map. You are always the white characters or white symbols on the screen. You use the arrow keys in order to control where the cursor is. There's a little menu that appears on this part when you hover over a unit. Info will show the status of this particular unit. This one has stopped and its condition and food is pretty good. There's also an option called size. This shows the makeup of the units as well as the number. The formation option allows you to choose how they stand in combat. The A's stand for archers and B's for barbarians in this particular case. You'll notice as you hit the formation key, it changes drastically how they're arranged. You move in the game by hovering over your units and pressing M. Then a box will appear. You choose where you want to go and hit mark. There will be a little white cross placed on the screen. That's where your units will be traveling to. You can also scroll the screen by moving up and down. There's also an option to adjust how fast time passes. Here we put it on fast. Text messages are displayed at the bottom of the screen and little clicking sounds are made when any type of event happens. Here we're going to be fighting someone. You can zoom in on the action by hovering over and hitting zoom. Again, you're white and you're on the right and the enemy is black. You have to choose the types of units and tell them to either attack or move forward. Here we move the barbarians to attack and then finally the knights to attack. The black army just retreated. The game also has a mini-map to show how many men are on your side and the enemy's side. If you want to quit, you can always surrender. You're presented with this screen. Damn, that arrow on the leg had to hurt. There's several different types of terrain, such as mountains. Here there's a lot of water and plains. The terrain determines how dangerous it is, as well as how slow your armies move. Here's some forest. You can also cross the water, but it really slows you down. And now the fun part, the battles. This is where you're going to be spending the majority of your time. It's really fun to watch the computer go at it and see these bodies just drop. And it's not gory because there's no blood. There's different types of units, as I mentioned earlier. There's archers, knights, and barbarians. There's also a type called a spy, but that one can't fight in combat. Barbarians are good against archers. Archers are good against knights. 
and knights are good against barbarians. The game takes into account even hillsides such as this. Whoever's on the hill fights better than who's below the hill. When everything's even, the formation and the condition of your units will determine who's probably going to win, although there is randomness to the game as well. For a 1984 game, the graphics were actually good. The backdrops would change as well as some of the objects and terrain in the foregrounds. And depending on how the terrain was on the map, determine the combat terrain, which is very cool. You can also fight in a village such as here. Notice the decapitated head toward the top center. Now that's cool. This next battle is a good demonstration of how unit types can really affect the battle. Watch this lone barbarian go up to these archers. I think he's Chuck Norris's ancestor. You can also have fights inside a fort, but only archers work here. Everybody else cannot attack. Like for instance these barbarians are trying to attack a fort, which is useless because they can't do anything because there's a big wall. So then you get killed and you run away. The AI for the game is kind of funny sometimes. Here the computer tried to attack my fort with a bunch of knights. So one of them got knocked off and then they ran away. Battles can also take place inside a fort once the enemy get inside. Whoever's inside the fort seems to do a little bit better, but not a whole lot. Is the knight going to make it? Oh, taken down by an arrow. Come on, Chuck. You can do it. You can do it. Oh. The game also has the concept of strength in numbers. If you have one guy against five, no matter what the unit types, you're probably going to lose. I chose to retreat in this particular battle, as the barbarians got real close. The computer can also fight for you if you don't want to zoom in, but most of the time it seems like you lose. Doesn't it feel like in some games the computer always cheats? Well anyway, another option in the game is you can merge and detach units. Here we're transferring from group 2 to group 1, and we're transferring some knights from group 1 to group 2. You can have up to three different types of units inside one group. I mentioned earlier that the condition of your units affects how they fight in a battle. It also affects how they move. You'll notice that this group is stuck. There's one knight and nine archers. You can keep trying to force it to move and it will move one step at a time. Normally the units will keep moving until they arrive at their destination. When they get tired this is the only way to move them. If we look at our condition in food, it's at the very bottom. And we lost a knight. There's only nine archers now. You win by trying to capture all of the black flags. And this is what happens when you capture the last flag. Yeah, pretty exciting. Well, it's a 1984 game. We got to cut them some slack. I really like Ancient Art of War. It's a nice, simple game that has some variety, but not overly complicated. And of course, there's lots of action. And it's fun, too, and funny to see how sometimes units die. Okay, that's a little morbid, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the review. And I'll see you next time.